Okay. 9.30 on a lovely Friday, New York morning. Uh, that's our first talk on the Debian Multimedia Conference. And uh, we have Eric here, also known as EDR Set, and he's going to present his talk conference with you. Eric. Okay. So as, uh, as, as Adrian said, I'm going to talk a bit about conference video. A little bit about me, just been a uh, Linux user since 2000, Debian since 2001. I've worked on the, uh, this, this year at this uh, conference, this is my eighth time working on video for um, free software conferences. Um, just a few words about why to do it. Um, you know, it, it, not everybody can get, not any, everybody from a community can get to an actual physical conference. So if we, what is ringing? Do you hear that? Are the environment mics in the room? Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, you know, parallel walls. Yeah. Look up above your head. Is that speaker? Yeah. Well, that's. There you go. That's fine. Okay. So anyway. Um, Right. Um, not everybody can get here, so you know it's good to be able to provide those the live streams if you can with IRC feedback, so that uh, you expand the audience. Um, the recordings provide a historical record. Um, doing it, having all that, having the the archives up online, having the streams increases the exposure for the event, and uh, the live streams. Uh, for me, that's really when the, the first time I, I, I listened to um, the Linux Audio Conference live streams back in 2003, um, then it was, it was just audio, um, but it, it suddenly the, the, the people that had previously just been text and email, uh, um, they had faces, they had gestures, they, they were just so much more real and the whole community just it, 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 there were real people there. That's why I've been doing this. Um, and then, you know, travel is really expensive and it's going to just get, keep getting more expensive. So it's going to become more and more difficult for people to travel internationally to conferences. So if we can do a good job of, of making videos and covering them, um, I think that, that helps, helps everybody. So just a quick run through of some of the conferences I've worked on and what we did there. Um, like I said, uh, the first two years of the Linux Audio Conference, there was audio only with just like a, a webcam being captured every 10 or 15 seconds. So, you know, it's like four frame per minute video, if you want to call it that. Um, but then in uh, 2005 was the first year we did video. This was a real simple setup, just one camera, one camcorder, and a, a laptop. The laptop doing the stream encoding, sending it out to an IceCast server. Um, pretty much the same setup in 2006. 2007, um, we, um, we moved. The, the first four years were in Karlsruhe um, at a, an audio video institute. So we had a really nice facility with dedicated audio engineers, and we didn't realize until we left how much we relied on them. And we got to Berlin, and we had to do everything ourselves. And it was in a rundown old university with wiring that nobody knew where it went or what it was connected to. And it pointed out just how important a large team is, first of all. To, to get this stuff done, and um, the importance of testing the network beforehand. And DubCon 7 in Edinburgh, um, that was the first year that um, DV Switch was available, um, and my first, you know, my first DubConf. Um, in 2008, I went, um, Ryan back there is working on the, shot of Ryan. Ryan's on the DV switch machine here today, but um, I went 
and helped him a little bit with the um, <laughs> with the video at, at Lennox Conf Australia. Um, and then two weeks later, with uh, no advance notice, he came to Germany and helped out the Linux Audio Conference. Then later that year, um, the Conf 8 was in Mar del Plata, Argentina, again using a um, multi-camera setup with DV switch. And um, finally, this, this year, here in New York City. So, well, most of you are on the video team, so you've already seen this, so you're probably not going to panic, but maybe somebody on the stream. Um, often, you know, with the first time you introduce new volunteers to uh, what we've got here, it, it can be a little overwhelming. But just as a general, we'll, we'll, I'm going to break this down into um, smaller components. <laughs> uh, but this here is a rough outline of, or, you know, basic schematic of what we've got downstairs in Davis. And this is a very similar, and just slightly less complex setup here in this room. Uh, these then are the servers over in the next building, um, file storage and transcoding and IceCast server. And then we have what's out there on the, on the net, um, DevConf, various DevConf machines for streaming and for our archive. So just to break that down, I'm going to go through some example setups, one a minimal setup, um, suitable for one person to operate, something you could easily walk into a user group meeting with and, and set it up with, with limited lead time. Um, just a camcorder, tripod, laptop, and if you want to stream uh, a stream server somewhere offsite to connect to. Then making it just slightly more interesting, um, capturing the, the projector output, then adding uh, an audio setup. Because um, in general, even with really good camcorders, the mics aren't all that great. And it's, it's, it's better if you can use these headset mics, some room mics, and mics to pass around the audience to get good quality audio into the stream. And then from there, it's just adding more cameras, which of course adds more people and more setup time and so on. But uh, here's a real basic setup. Just one camcorder, um, a laptop connected to the, to the camcorder by Firewire, um, either the internal hard drive of the laptop, if it's big enough for storage, or if not, a, um, you know, just use a USB drive. And then a uh, network link to an IceCast server, and hopefully some happy viewers. So the laptop um, just needs something like DV Grab or Kino to um, capture from the FireWire output. Um, DV eats up a lot of storage, um, so depending on how long you intend to uh, intend to be recording, you um, need to plan it. That buzz is annoying. But, sorry. Um, but it's, it's roughly about 13 gigabytes per hour, so just plan ahead for that. Um, and uh, finally, it, if, if you don't tell people where the stream is going to be, it's you know, fairly obvious they're not going to tune in. Um, somewhat fortunate with DevConf, we've got an established relay network that stays at the same place so people know where to find us. Um, Kino is just a basic uh, video editor capable of capturing to disk. Um, it's perfectly adequate if, if you don't want to stream. It also gives you a, a view of what it is you're recording. If you are streaming, you can use a command line piped together like this. Um, DV grab to capture. FFmpeg to Theora converts the DV 
into Fiora and Vorbis and wraps it up in Aug. And then Aug forward just talks to the IceCast server to pass, pass the data through. Um, but that, that's very simplified. The, um, doing that from the command line gets pretty ugly pretty quickly. Um, but just to briefly go through this, the stuff in blue is your metadata, um, speaker, title, timestamps, so on. And um, the green is where you're in this, you know, if you were to do it this way, um, is where you, you would be writing your files. Um, the top one in the DV grab, that would capture the, um, the full DV output. And um, the AUG in the T to capture that. Um, but like I said, it's better to wrap that up in some sort of script or a uh, more user-friendly piece of software, which I'll get to in a moment. Um, so, you know, putting up one camera, pointing it at the presenter, that's, that's nice. I mean, it's better than nothing. It's a good record of the event. But it's really difficult to um, for for to to get the presenter and their the slides from the projector with a camera and have both be visible in a useful way. So um, it's it's good to have some way to capture the output from the presenter's laptop, which is what we're doing here. We have the VGA out going to a device. Um, called a twin pack, it's sitting up on the, um, the AV cabinet over there. And that um, captures the, the video out and converts it to DV. And then also passes it through to, to the projector in the room. And from there, this, you know, it, 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 it appears to the, um, to the to the to the laptop as a just another firewire input, just like a just another camera, and from there the stuff is the same. But since we have two sources now, you need a way to choose between them and possibly mix them. Um, and depending on the um, the um, capacity, the capabilities of of of. of of this laptop here, you may need a separate machine to do the stream encoding um, before you send it off to the IceCast server. But uh, as I said, when you've got two sources or more, you need a piece of software to um, to help you mix those. So this is this is a screenshot from DV Switch, which is what Ryan's back there operating for us. Um, what you see here. This main window shows the program out. That's the um, video that's actually going out to the recordings and to the live stream. And down here you have thumbnail images of something funny happening on IRC back there. No, nothing, nothing, nothing. Picture in picture of the picture. Picture in the picture of the picture in the picture. Yeah, something like that, okay. So, you know, here's, one camera, the main camera from the back on the presenter, an audience camera with an empty audience. <laughs> the uh, capture from the twin pack of, of the um, slides. Um, we have also the ability to capture the audio um, directly from a also supported audio device and just generate blank or black, in this case, DV frames. And here, this final one is the loop file, um, just played, um, played, a, uh, yeah, played as a loop while we're not live. Oh. So, as a, yeah, we've got the two, pi two inputs. <laughs> Uh, picture in picture, and you know everything that was in that 
all of this is still happening. It's just been split up between these, these different programs in blue here. So we have DV source grab, uh, DV source, DV grab, which uh, runs the capture on, on each of the DV sources. And DV source file plays the, uh, the loop. DV sync then are where the, um, the main output goes. Uh, files is where we record. Um, you can either send that to a file server somewhere else, or you can record it locally and transfer them later. And DV sync command is used to run the, uh, the, FF, the encoder and send it off to the ICECAST server. So once you've got multiple video sources, the next thing you might want to consider is improving your audio. Like I mentioned, the, um, the, the built-in mics on camcorders tend to not be all that great. It also gives you, doesn't give you much flexibility in where you place your mics. So as you can see here, we're, I, I like these wireless headset mics. Um, it prevents any problems with, you know, keeping speakers sometimes don't, on, you know, if they've got the, the handheld mic in their hand, they might gesture with it while they're talking and you lose their audio. They might actually hold it where they need to and turn away to look at their slides and then you lose them. So this, you know, it's attached. They can't get away from it. Um, then the, these uh, condensers in the middle of the room there give us a chance to give the, um, the recordings a bit of a uh, sense of the ambiance of the room. And um, also if um, the audience starts to ask questions before they've been given a, given, a, given a mic, you can bring that up a little bit and get a little bit of, of what they're saying. Um, and of course, having all these various audio inputs, you need some sort of a mixer. Um, ideally, you want one that can do two independent mixes, one to go to the speakers in the room, um, and that one you, you never want to send the, um, the room mics into the room because you get the feedback loop and it's painful. And then uh, the other mix is for the recordings and and the, um, the streams. Um, but this does then get into more than one person can reasonably handle on their own. And also more time for setup and testing. So how do we get that audio? As we mentioned earlier, um, we're using, here we're using DV source also and a USB audio device, um, which is which is, I think, the ideal solution. The Twin Pact has audio input. It's not the best option because if uh, if the um, laptop output gets disconnected, it'll stop sending DV or stop sending audio into the stream. Um, and um, if you've got nice prosumer cameras like the one in the back there with proper balanced mic inputs, you can send the audio directly into that. Um, but it's nice if you are running tape in the camera just as a backup to not do that, to have the camera mics um, go to tape in case everything else in the room just falls apart on you. Then from there it's um, making more complex. You just, you know, Adding a second camera, you get a chance to show shots of the audience, and uh, you can provide an alternate angle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> provide some variety. Um, but then, of course, you know, Firewire has a five-meter cable limit, so you 
depending on the size of the room, and in a room even this size, we need at least two capture machines. In this case, we've got three, one for the twin pack, one for the audience camera, and the DV switch is grabbing from the main camera. And yeah, um, I said it in the opening, opening session on Sunday that you, this just, this can't happen without a team. Um, once you've gone to this level of complexity with this many machines and cameras and mics and and uh, yeah, it, it takes a team. And as far as uh, the software side, um, each new source is just another DV source fire running somewhere. So we're back to the um, overall big diagram of what we've got here this year for DebConf. Um, hopefully it makes a little more sense now. Various other things to talk about. What are we doing on time? Oh, I'm out of time. Um, yeah, it takes, it takes a good deal of planning to make things work, and even then, things don't always work. Good to, it's necessary to have a, a workflow established for reviewing and, and encoding the files afterwards, and getting them posted up online. Um, in many cases, getting those recordings up shortly after the event is almost as good as the live streaming um, to keep the sort of momentum and interest around the topics discussed in the conference going. Um, yeah. um, just a note on speaker wrangling. Um, often people will suggest, well, you know, wouldn't this all be easier if you just made the speakers all use their same laptop? Wouldn't this be easier if um, you got the speakers to all use the same slide format? And it's just, it just doesn't work. Everybody wants to use their own laptop, write their own slides do their slides in the talk before, <laughs> or <laughs> if there's no talk, um, come set up and do it like I did today. It's really important to protect your cabling and your, your equipment by taping it, all, taping it all down. It also protects your team members from tripping and falling on stuff. Um, and just make sure you've got enough space. Um, and some thank yous to Jorn for um, starting starting the uh, streaming at the Linux Audio Conference all those years ago, um, getting me inspired. PyCon video team has has started using the, the same tool set as us here at DubConf, and we've gotten a lot of help, and they're, they're here today. Show them. I mean, you know, Ryan and Carl back there. <laughs> and the organizers of the conference, uh, without which, of course, we wouldn't have anything to record and stream. And as I've said many times, the video team, um, you guys rock. And Holger for, um, you know, uh, there was a time earlier this year, it wasn't clear if he was coming or not, and said to a number of people, I just can't imagine DebConf without Holger. I'm really glad he, he decided to come and help out again. And Ben Hutchings, the author of DV Switch. Everyone at ziff.org for, um, for the codex we use and for IceCast. And uh, you for coming. So, that's... <laughs>
what's it, 2632, I think, kernel. So it is now working with, with um, what they call it, the new stack? Juju. Juju, yeah. So yes. Well, I find that impressive what you're doing, but uh, and to, to have a mobile uh, mobile studio like that. Uh, but uh, how many um, do you have stats on how many people look at the um, videos at the Can video conference? It's on. Is the red light on at the bottom? Yeah, it's on. It's on. Keep talking. Okay. All right. So do you have stats on how many people look at the uh, videos and uh, that are produced? And, uh, um, so it's, it's a little bit difficult because we've got this distributed network of, of streaming servers and um, so we have to try and pull that together and I'm not always sure that IceCast reports those statistics completely accurately but um, Earlier in the week, um, one of the server admins was saying there was uh, several hundred people at peak amongst all those different servers watching the streams. Um, but but it's but we also had someone who came up with a um, a um, a nice um, page with the videos where he was pulling from the IceCast servers and people came through him. So if someone sets up their own relay, we don't have those stats. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a little difficult to tell, but it's in the range of several hundred, at least for the live streams. Um, and I think, Carl, for PyCon, with the videos you uploaded, you've got good stats there, and you've got hundreds of thousands of downloads, don't you? Yeah, we, we don't actually stream live, yeah. And the flip TV stats are quarter million views. Use the mic. Use the mic. <laughs> Use the mic. But, um, yeah, so. <laughs> um, we, we post this stuff to, all right, this is weird, Blip TV, and each year we've had about a quarter million hits on the recorded videos. So, so yeah, it, it gets out there. People, yeah, people. There's a need. I see that. There's yeah. a need. Yeah. Yeah, we get a lot of good feedback from people. Who seem to appreciate the work we do. I think Carl's I think one of the biggest problems is actually advertising that this stuff is available. Right. Because periodically I run into people going, "Yeah, I heard about PyCon. Boy, I wish I could come." Well, did you watch the videos? Yeah. What videos? Right. It's like, yeah. Someone pointed out. I think um, Zach, the DPL, pointed out that we really need a. Uh, a dubcom video website that explains what we do and you know, advertises what we do. Um, I would suggest uh, MuroCommunities.com. It's a nice video aggregation sure. wad of software. Yeah. Yeah. So getting the word out. There's one more talk about it. <laughs> Anything else? Any more questions here in the room? If not, I have a question. Eric, um, mm -hmm. do you see room for improvements? And if room. so, where? Oh yeah, definitely room for improvements. Um, one of the biggest, biggest things is just... <laughs> um, <laughs> good audio equipment. <laughs> it doesn't buzz and hum. No, um, one of the biggest things is, is really organizational and um, just making sure that the overall organizing team and the rest of the conference understands what we're doing and what our requirements are in advance and also understands how important the people who can't get here, how, how important it is for them. Um, sometimes it's, it's hard to if, if for, the, for an organizing team that's mostly volunteers who have never done this before or only done it a few times, it's hard to understand 
sometimes I think why the video team needs so many resources. Um, but so, so, you know, on the social side, there's that. But then technically, there's definitely room for, for improvement. Um, in the development version of DB Switch, we've got, um, Wouter wrote, Wouter's on the camera back there, um, wrote a fading function so that we can fade between shots. Um, um, as with so many things in Debian and free software in general, um, it's just people power, people time. Ben Hutchings, the main author, has in the past year become part of the Debian kernel team and just hasn't had time to work on DB switch. The reason we're not using the fading function this year here at DubConf is because there wasn't time to, he didn't have time to release. Um, um, in the development branch, it's also in, the tran in a transition from inverting the sense. Right now, DB switch, the, the, the user interface, acts as a server to which the, um, the sources and sinks connect. But um, Ben's in the middle of a transition to using... <laughs> using... Yeah, right. That's not <laughs> <laughs> using RTP and um, what's that library called? Live 555? Yeah. yeah. 555. Um, so that each source and sync becomes a server and the interface, this, the switching software becomes a client to all of those. And I, I think once that transition is completed, that'll give us more flexibility. We could have, we could have uh, Ryan sitting in Australia doing the directing <laughs> through some sort of web client or something, I don't know. Um, I have long talked about the need for a DB source jack to get the audio from a, a jack um, stream so that we could both record the audio, audio off the mixing desk separately independently of DB switch and also run some if we needed to process the audio in any way um, within Jack uh, that would be interesting there's a long to-do list on the on the Alia uh, um, project page too so what would the, be the advantage of having the audio stream uh, recorded separately the because I would think you just would <laughs> just as a backup just in case you know you lose the whole video setup if DB switch dies the audio is really oh right not yeah. not to 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 mix it in afterwards but no. basically I so mean, if you don't have a video you, at least you still have the audio that's what you mean yeah right okay. well, and and then yeah it also you could possibly afterwards use that in an editing situation do you know how much work that is yeah <laughs> that's why it never okay. happens but i'm just saying it would be nice but um I don't know. Do you guys have any? Carl? I have Ryan? a dozen or so issues on the issue tracker. Yeah. <laughs> Make the fade button. Um, yeah, the, 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 most requested, the most requested feature is the picture in picture swap. So the, mm -hmm. the main and the picture in picture can be yeah. reversed out real in, quick. In the interface, the Oops. The um, these buttons here, the speakers, the little speaker icon selects where your audio is coming from. So in our setup, we would generally have it on this blank video audio source coming from the mixer. In what you see here in this screenshot, the um, the slides are the A source, and the picture of me there is the B source and what Carl's talking about is some way to click a button and have those just reverse. Yeah. Uh, right now we don't have that. Um. I'd like to be able to crop the picture in picture so that I'm not actually having to use the full frame mm -hmm. of that feed for the little yeah. thumbnail or well. Yeah. So you could so that you could like click so click in the thumbnail, 
drag and select just this much. Actually, the backend already supports that. It's just that there's no UI for it, okay. which is very useful. <laughs> so, yeah, lots of room for improvement. How about AV Sync? Do we have to take care of audio latency, compensated, or the, is it um, uh, perfectly lip sync? What we're streaming. This right um, the DV source also has a delay setting, so that you can. You know, it, I mean, it's not. It's, it doesn't have anything like. Um, uh, what's the tool that? With Jack, you can get run Jack delay. Yeah, Jack delay. Exactly. Yeah, to um. To. Are, just, are you worried about just it drifting? The source of where it progressively gets worse? Is that, that well, the I, I think the way this works, the DV source also becomes the clock master, and the cameras, the camera sources, you, it just drops or repeats frames yeah, from the video. Yeah. It's throwing away the audio from those. What's that? Well, part of it is because this is all being mixed real time, whatever the sources are coming in right now, they are all in sync. Because yeah. it's all right now. And if something starts drifting, then the extra data just gets tossed and right. everything gets realigned. Yeah. So. It, um, and it, I mean, it's probably not scientifically precise, but it's <laughs> close enough. Um, I, it reminds me, though, not specifically related, but I just wanted to mention that we are also using. Um, FFmpeg 0.6. Um, it's not in Squeeze. It won't be in Squeeze, but it's in Experimental. Debian, the Experimental, um, whatever. What you, what's the? <laughs> yeah, that repo. <laughs> um, but backported to the snapshot of Squeeze that we're using, and also the the, um, the latest um, FFmpeg 2 Theora 0.27. But um, anything else? What do you think about using VP8 in the future? I would love to. I don't know how long it'll be till the streaming tools are there. Um, it would certainly be possible. I mean, this DV switch is modular. It would be, you know, uh, if there's say there's a G streamer. Um, pipeline that could be used to encode VP8 and send it to IceCast or some other streaming solution. There was there was actually talk of doing it for DepConf 10, but that would have been a bit too soon. But I believe there was a decision that we were going to do the yeah, encoded videos right. in VP8 as well. So um, we might not get it done while we're here, but I, I intend to make that happen. I'll be taking home a full copy of all the DV and as I have, as time permits, you know, we'll, we'll do some VPA encodings too. I'm also interested in um, um, what's the BBC codec, Drac, Drac. yeah, Drac. trying to put encode some of the files in that too. Yeah. So. And do you think we will run into problems once the screen size in, uh, increases when we have projectors supporting? 1,600 across well, 1,000. Yeah, um, for this kind of production, I'm just wondering how long we'll have mini DV cameras <laughs> to use. Um, we're sort of at the point where there, there aren't that many new models, if any, coming into the market. The market sort of moved Actually, on. Actually, um, I did see that currently the only kind of cameras you can really buy um, that have DVR, these kind of prosumer things. Mm -hmm. um, but I did see that there's, Canon was already bringing out a slightly less expensive model that also had a DV output. What I think the problem is is just that um, doing HD and DV is, requires some extra uh, chips that currently are too expensive to, to do in, in really cheap models. But yeah. as time goes on, it probably will reappear. That's my, that's yeah. my belief anyway. Did this die? No. Um, the other thing with um, HD over over FireWire is that it's interframe compressed, 
in, yeah. yeah, inner frame compressed. Whereas DV, the, the compression, it is compressed, but it's just intra frame. Each frame is compressed, but each frame remains independent of all the others. Um, so to go to HD, DV, um, DV switch would have to do a lot more work to decode and yeah, I, I just it, I, I don't know what the next step is beyond DV, mini DV cameras. Um, would you say it makes sense to have an uh, on percentage laptop uh, capture software to yeah, get rid of the DV, I mean, uh, the it, twin packs? It would be wonderful, but as I said before, um, speaker wrangling just at least at free software conferences, I haven't seen it happen. Um, trying to get everybody to submit their slides in advance and make sure they all work in the same format on the same machine. I mean, it would make our lives easier. <laughs> yeah. It definitely would, but I've, I've not seen it work. I don't know how to make it happen. You will never find a speaker that is going to let you install some whack piece of software on their laptop right, right before they're ready to speak. Yeah. yeah, it could only work with a, a common laptop in front. And then, and, yeah. Eric, pop out to a shell to show us something. You would then never see that. Because this is Eric's laptop that he's got his stuff on, and he wants to show us something. Yeah. And if it's not his laptop, he's like, well, I'd love to show you this. But, uh, and so, yeah, it's, I, I considered the whole software thing, and, and once I found the twin packs and how well they worked, which, by the way, I'm going to give a little plug to the twin pack. I worked with some other hardware devices that were complete crap <laughs> compared to the twin pack. So, uh, yeah, twin, twin pack, Canopus, Green Valley, Glass Valley, whatever you guys are, call yourself. You're, you're great. Go twin pack. Yeah. So this is pure customer advice by twin packs. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, more questions? If not, I would like to end the talk here and uh, thank Eric once again for his presentation. We now have a slight break and we'll be back after this. Thank you. Woo!